the series kicks off with <laughs> A Time to Live and A Time to Die. 1985, starting again back at the 80s. Well, like technically like the 40s through like the 60s, because mm. that's when the movie is set. But, yeah. yeah. Um, so we are doing all family dramas for this series, and this is our first. Yeah. This is a Taiwanese movie. Um, it's nineteen eighty five, directed by uh, Hua So Sin. Yep. Sin. Um, interesting. This movie is actually part of like a trilogy. It's mm. so like a coming of age trilogy from the director, and he, yeah. I guess, he teams up with um, other co screenwriters. And then, like, this movie specifically is sort of a semi-autobiographical on his coming of age, uh, living in Taiwan. And then there's, like, this is, like, the middle movie because there's one that's before and there's another one that came after. And um, those are about, like, the screenwriters that he partnered up with and they have a stake in their story with those. Um, so, which is a pretty cool thing. It sounds yeah. pretty interesting. Uh, for those that are interested, the other two are Summer of Grandpa's, Summer at Grandpa's. Summer of Grandpa. Sim- Summer of Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa, it's all about you. Uh, that was 84, and then in 86, uh, Dust in the Wind. Um, so for those who are interested. But yeah, um, what attracted you to this movie? You- um, well, I enjoyed uh, this di- director's films. Okay. Um, he did uh, Assassin, which is pretty recent. Mm. It was shown, I think, in the New York Film Festival. Um, I think it was opening. Um, it opened for New York Film Festival. Yeah. Okay. Um. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was just interested in it, and then you know we had to figure out what we wanted to do <laughs> for uh, family dramas. We're a bit of a draw. Yeah, and I I thought it would be a an interesting one. Also, it's a little uh, older than the other ones that we kind of have, so I thought it would be a good mix. Was it watching the trailer was like super HD and like almost remastered looking? Yeah. And then when I watched the movie, I go, okay, now this is more the 80s. Yeah, it's but I mean, it's still, I was actually quite like blown away by just how well it was shot yeah. and how simple it was. And yet like how like effective he used like just the simple things that he had mm. and, and just simple movement like panning and yeah. and just like just... Literally just not even moving the camera sometimes, but just like blocking the characters and just um, choosing interesting like scenes, like um, areas to shoot. I think really helped um, make this film. Great. Yeah, it was very simple. And like, I agree, like he definitely used like the most of everything that was around him. Yeah. And I always like, I don't know, like I, I felt like I could see everything and like, perfectly as it was you know mm. like you know it, it didn't feel like it was cinematography in a sense you know because it really the movie does a great job of like transporting you into that time you know and so like into that life um and i think that the cinematography of it like really had a hand in being like wide a lot of times and like just showing the scene and the blocking and this is what the town looks like these are what the people are doing you know yeah and i, I think it really plays to um, just the story itself yeah. like it helps um, tell the story because um, they live a very simple life right yep, and kind of it's it's in- enforcing that through how it's shot mm. so I think that was pretty cool it's definitely like a, a slow paced kind of slice of life yeah kind of like this film yeah it's pretty very slow paced yeah. <laughs> and so some people might have a hard time kind of going through it mm. yeah um so you can jump in a little bit about the movie so pretty much it's we follow mainly um uh i think it's like his actual name is like uh hasai or something or uh how i didn't write it down yeah but his but his nickname is Uh aha yeah um that's like what his um grandmother like keeps calling him yeah when he tries to Uh Track him down Uh 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 (laughs) everywhere it's like the first thing that you see yeah um, after the title. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so like the backdrop is that this uh, family is from somewhere in mainland China. Yeah, in mainland China. Um, and then they, well, the father originally moves to Taiwan um, because he works in education, basically. Um, so like one of his old colleagues invited him to work as like a kind of 
like um not like it's below a supervisor initially but then after living there for a year he gets promoted to be a supervisor and he was like taiwan's not that bad and then he's like come down family <laughs> and so after he moves in his family moves in with him and then they just pretty much end up settling there for reasons per se yeah um but yeah we follow like i guess you can say he's like the middle child of the family he's the middle son aha mm -hmm. um and it initially takes place when he's in grade school what is he like he's a first grade yeah he's young yeah, yeah. Um, so growing up in like that time and um, everybody's still in his family and it really follows like him as a first grader and also kind of like the role that his father kind of plays at that time. Um, and then his father eventually passes away from tuberculosis is what I find out. And then the second half, it pretty much like time skips to when Aha's a teenager. Yeah. Um, like like late high school, pretty much. Yeah. Um, and then he's. <laughs> turns into like a troublesome like teenager pretty much he's like part of a gang essentially i mean he was always a little bit of a goofball even when he was right, young right. he got in trouble with his mother and stuff mm. but yeah but like in a way it, it plays to the youthfulness in those scenes you know mm -hmm. like he's just kind of a yeah but he's still a know. punk <laughs> <laughs> he is kind of he is still a punk. <laughs> but then he's like a teenage punk right. by this time right um and so like the story is about him and sort of that phase and that's more of like the teenage coming of age, you know, and then kind of growing up like past adolescence in a sense. And then that compared to like the role of his mother uh, getting sick and then eventually also passing away. Yeah. And then shortly after that, uh, the grandmother passes away and that's when it concludes. Yeah. 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 So easy way to kind of, I guess, structure it would be like the beginning to the father when the father dies, it's the end of his young young life, right? right? And then from there, um, he becomes a teenager, and then um, till his grandmother dies. That's the rest of the film. Mm -hmm. And then I guess when the mother dies, it's kind of like the middle climax, or like yeah. when the mother gets um, diagnosed. I guess would yeah. be like the middle. Mm -hmm. and then, I would even say like once the mom dies, that's like everything that happens after the mom passes away is almost kind of like an epilogue-ish because yeah. then it just goes to like narration more and then yeah. with, when the grandma passes um which is funny like i was like damn she outlived everybody I know, right? <laughs> like oh, that's what i was thinking too and she was already past 80 like yeah. in the very beginning you know it's wild yeah gotta live like her she's wild. um what like some moments kind of struck out to you in the movie in the film because the movie is like we said is very slow paced slow paced and that kind of what sort of brings your eyes is like i find movies like this is a very sort of moment to moment thing you know and that there are certain scenes and aspects that's like maybe kind of re-engages you a little bit yeah um i was struck by like um a lot of the very small things that you, you like you were talking about like for example um the grandma and the and the child they go um walking mm -hmm. um I, I forget exactly where they were going but uh they stopped by a like a little shop mm -hmm. and they they're eating like shaved ice mm -hmm. and i was just like oh wow like they had shaved ice like, like back then <laughs> i guess i guess they had obviously they had yeah. it but like just looking at it seeing it, it was kind of cool i was wondering what flavor that was i'm like did they just pour sugar on top of the ice because right. it, it looked like plain shaved ice yeah. and then no like syrup yeah. <laughs> And it's funny how like all the kids they like chew on like sugar canes. Yeah. They like chewing on sugar canes. Yeah. So much sugar cane. And yeah, like there's so many little like tidbits and little moments I think that really make up um the movie. Yeah. And I think it really gives the the movie and the place like life mm -hmm. and believability where like there's these little specific things that like I guess like if you imagine your own childhood, there's like little um, moments where you know like oh like this brings me back to that time mm -hmm. when i like used to go to the pool and like i would get churros or something like that right yeah. and it's kind of the same kind of you know um style in this film mm -hmm. where i guess the director or whoever is just reminiscing about what he you know enjoyed or what he thought about or what he um felt and and like smelled and ate when he was younger mm -hmm. and like bringing that back into the film as a way of kind of um, reliving those memories. Right. And so, yeah, I think 
those are like the the biggest parts like and it was i also really liked um when he's like um Sharpening the the katana, the the, <laughs> like the machete. The machete. <laughs> Old ass machete. I was I was watching it and it said it said samurai sword. Yeah, yo, <laughs> I was so lost when that happened. I was, I was like, okay, they have to be referring to the machete, but yeah. like that's no way. But it was funny, like, <laughs> yeah. He's like, okay, sure, like he passes it on to them. <laughs> I think it was like so rusty, and he's just like, <laughs> I can fix this. Yeah, I can make it new. Samurai sword. Yeah, I, that's a really good point though, because you do feel like his sense of like nostalgia in a way. You know that he he brings like his memories to like into the movie, and it makes it feel like you're reliving it in that way. Just like it sets down to the little things of oh, kind of remembering eating sugar cane like every day or with your family or outside hanging out sort of thing. Just all those kind of little bits and pieces as things that I remember as a kid as well. Um, and then those are kind of like like the small things are end up being like the biggest memories, you know, or like yeah. the biggest feelings of nostalgia that you have that transport you back into um, that time. Yeah. You know, like at times you, you can go through like as an adult, maybe like you smell a certain food or like you're in a certain town and you're just kind of transported back to your childhood. Mm-hmm. And like this movie is kind of like all that bundled together yeah. in a way. And I think that's like what makes this film so great. Mm those things and like capturing those things in a very genuine yeah. way yeah, it's it's like weird because it's it ha- i feel like it it bounces a lot of different moods together mm-hmm. you know like that sense of nostalgia but also bringing like the just kind of like the realization of life and like fleeting because like specifically like as we follow um aha in his day in life it's very youthful yeah. um in every aspect but behind the scenes, like, you know, his father is sick and ill and then eventually he passes away. And especially, like, uh, in the latter half with his mother. Yeah. Like, his mother gets cancer early on and then she's really not even in the movie half the time because she ends yeah. up going to Tapai. And then when she comes back, she's even sicker than when she was living there, you know? So it's like this weird kind of backdrop of depression, maybe, or, like, the realization of certain things. And then, but, like, covered with, this sort of like coming of age youthfulness that we see with Anaha. It's kind of, but also it's a good representation of just also real life in a way. Just even like for me, kind of like, you know, the everyday life kind of covers up like some bigger impactful things that happen around you. So it's pretty, pretty like an interesting balance that it was able to kind of accomplish in that sense. Yeah, I agree. Like I think definitely the, the beauty of this film is like how it's able to like show both things like you said like just making that kind of realization of just the kind of life that they're living as like this kind of almost depressing backdrop like you said of like backdrop of like his youthfulness right he's still a young child and he's still a young teenager and he has these like feelings like you know, like those moments when like he like looks like has those glances at that girl or like mm. or like he's like fighting with his like gang like his buddies and like fighting the other gang like right. like how dare you like cut in front of my friends <laughs> like you know it's like such like trivial like kid things but those things are kind of like at the forefront but like in the back there's this bigger um mm. like problem right or like just I guess just life, like you said, it's just life of like, you know, people living and people dying and, and just being in that place and having to go through these things that I guess a lot of people back then in that time period probably went through, you know, just having to deal with, you know, sickness and like, if you're sick, like, what are you really going to do? (laughs) Right. Even when like the father was sick. You can see, like, how everybody around the family and even sometimes the family treat, like, the situation that they're in, you know? Yeah. Like, when they pronounce the father dead, like, that was quite a scene. Yeah, because, like, yeah, like, that scene where, like, the father, like, the doctor comes in and he kind of just looks at him and he's like, oh, like, we can't do much. <laughs> he's like, well. Yeah, sorry, sorry. you can't do it. Yeah, it's, yeah. like, too late. And, and that's just kind of very, like, disheartening, right? Mm-hmm. And just kind of shows the time period and the and the place For sure. and just like it's kind of sad because you're like 
wow, like if that was like in the present right now, maybe they could have, you know, done something. But yeah, like yeah. back then, more drastic measures. Though. Right, right. Like go to the hospital, like try to do something to save that person. Right. But but here it's just like, sorry, like even like continue. how long it took because like they found him unresponsive like in the day. Yeah. And then when the doctor comes, it's like, who knows how long yeah. at night, you know? So, and even when, like, when the doctors come, like, there's a few friends or something, like, outside playing, you know? Like, there's a whole neighborhood thing. Well, I think all the neighborhood was kind of, like, Mm -hmm. heard about it, and they're kind of, like, lingering around. And some of the people, like, the parents are probably, like, going in and out. But then, like, the kids are, like, outside just oblivious to whatever is happening, and they're just, like, hanging out. And I think it's a very, like telling scene of just kind of it's very believable you know yeah Yeah. you that that's kind of happens in like funerals right Mm -hmm. where like there's kids like it's just like playing around but then like the adults are like sad and and cry (laughs) (laughs) and then like even like the parents are pushing the kids to cry you know Mm -hmm. and kind of exert emotion when he's pronounced dead um in that way like you can see you know every kid is like you know, hold your father's hand for like that last time, and every and like even the kids are kind of forced into saying a goodbye in that way. Um, and then it's interesting to see even each child reacting to that. It's like you know the older kind of understands sort yeah. of the situation and is more you know sad and emotional, whereas like as the younger kids go, it kind of they're like more I don't know they're not really aware of what's happening. Yeah. It was I I like that scene where um, the father's dead and then the and then um, the sister tells um, Aha to go take a shower. Yeah. Well, he she first tells the other kid to go take a shower, but he's like, "Oh, I already took a shower." Mm-hmm. So he's like, "Aha, you go take a shower then." <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes and he's like um, getting the water from into the bat yeah. the basin or whatever, and then his mother starts like screaming, mm-hmm. and like he like looks back. And shocked. and he's he has that shocked face. Yeah. Uh, I think that was a very like telling scene. Just like you can kind of feel like what he might be thinking about and like what he right. might be going through at that moment. Mm. Where like it's kind of like at that age, going back to like my point, you like you're not you're not really aware of how to feel. Right, you're not fully aware of what this means, right? Yeah, yeah. Like what death means and like what. This like the consequences of what this is going to like do to his life and stuff, but just like his face in that moment where he's like looking back in shock, just like like others like the mother kind of scares him in a way, right? And just like hearing his mother's voice like screaming like that, right. it's kind of very poetic in a certain sense and very revealing. Yeah, I, th- I actually really like that because like that shot transfers into the like the next half per se. Yeah. And so it was like a very interesting like match cut kind of thing. Yeah. Just comparison like from then to now. Like a a thing that always kind of happens with like subtitled movies, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Especially like um when like they get older, it's like I'm sometimes not sure if that's the same yeah. guy. I was, I was probably like halfway through that section till I realized who I, yeah. uh, <laughs> I had to watch it again and I was like Oh, okay. This kid is him. Okay. Like, I had an idea, but, like, yeah. there's so many dudes with white shirts on. I'm just I like, know. which one's which? <laughs> and then, like, you look back at it, and Aha's not doing anything in that yeah. scene. He's literally, he's the only one sitting back. Yeah. Like, he's just sitting and eating his, like, sugar cane. <laughs> <laughs> telling other kids to, like, steal right. from all the... I was, like, at one point, I wasn't even sure that he was in that scene. And then, like, it was just some random kids <laughs> yeah. and then we didn't see him until he went into the house and I was like where were you what what did I just watch then I don't I don't understand yeah like I got really lost too when after so like he, he's in school and then the teacher is like upset because he's accusing assumingly aha for cheating yeah and then he goes into the classroom and then aha fools him yeah, with he like nothing. he has not really cheating but like the scene after that like him and a couple of students go to bully this other kid. Yeah. And I was like, I didn't know who ha- Aha was like out of that crowd. I was like, is he the kid getting bullied? No, is he bully, the bully? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It was until I went back and I was like, oh, he's like a real, an actual prick. Like, yeah. <laughs> yes. he's, an, he's an actual jerk. Yeah. 
Yeah, it took me. It took me a little bit, dude, yeah, to kind of realize. Yeah, it took me a second there. <laughs> I was like, hmm. Is, oh yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the kid. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it makes more sense. I like once I realized that, I'd realize even more how much of like, like a boy he is, mm. uh, throughout the rest. Because like I don't know, my impression was he's kind of passive, but then he's like turns out to be more of a bully later on. But he's just kind of a dick through and through. But in some ways, like, there's a bit of vulnerability to his character um, in some scenes as well, which is interesting. Like, I think what the movie does good is, like, kind of going back to it separates, you know, um, like, just it's a slice of life, but also kind of, like, having these impactful scenes with, you know, a parent dying in the background. Mm -hmm. But, like, you know, even as a kid, you kind of live maybe a double life in a way. Like, your family life and family lifestyle is really separate and private from yeah. what you live outside. Right. And uh, you get, like, I got a really big impression of that, especially when he's a teenager, because mm. he's living such of, like, a different life outside of his yeah. home, you know? Like, he comes, he, like, helps out with the groceries. Right, like, right. he bought buys the groceries for his mother. But then, like, when he goes out, he, like, goes out with a machete <laughs> and, like... He's, like, chugging around. Yeah, he's thugging <laughs> around. Or, like, the moment when, like, his mother's sick and he... She has cancer at night, and then he, like the his like buddies come come around. And he's like, "Hey, like one of our guys got hacked," and he's like, "I can't go out today. Like, like my mom's sick." And you know, it's just a, such a line, mm-hmm. right? Of like, this is the outside world. Like, this is my outside persona. Right, this right. is my inside persona, and you kind of have to like reconcile those things mm-hmm. together. And like, they don't mix at all, kind yeah. of thing as well. So, and like the fact that he. I get the sense that it's very like he keeps him separate and like his family doesn't really know what he does outside of the family. Yeah. Um, and then it's the same vice versa in a way. The funny like, thing is, um, do you know that moment when um, the grandma comes back home mm-hmm. and like the guy who's on the, the rickshaw dude, yeah. he's like, oh, you have to pay me a hundred. Like, and then I was just like, <laughs> no, screw <laughs> you. And he starts like chasing him around. Yeah. And like the grandma and the sister is just like watching him. <laughs> but like, the, like, like the sister was in that scene. But like, that was interesting because I went back and it's because that's when the the sister was already married, yeah. and then that's when she had just took the mom to Taipei. So basically, like, it was just the brothers and the grandma living alone after that. And so it was like an interesting new way of life in a sense and they have to fend for themselves yeah. in that situation and so like in that scene he just goes to the extreme and he's just not not he's like ten dollars <laughs> he's like ten he's like ten is too cheap yeah. um but yeah it's, it's it's pretty much it's really interesting like the so many scenes of him going out and then being chased by somebody and then fleeing back home yeah. and it'd be like has anybody been looking for me <laughs> And his brother's like, no, I don't, know what, I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. He like jumps over walls. <laughs> and when he gets into that, um, I guess he was like at some rec center or something, and he's playing pool, and then he drops like the balls, and then the guy yeah. was like getting mad at him. That kind of like the context of the movie loses me a bit because yeah. I don't know what's happening in the, yeah. in the period. Yeah, because he's like gets mad at him because it was like the VP's birthday. Some kind of, or, yeah, some it was some day. Right, right. And then he's like, do you know what day it is today? Yeah. yeah. Like, that lost me, and then it didn't even make sense as to why he was picking on him for that reason either. Um, but, like, him and then his friends end up just, like, kind of trashing the place. And then he... rocks at the... Yeah. yeah. And then it's, like, hinted that, like, the... I guess the police were looking for him, and he's he's home, and then somebody knocks on the door, and he, like, leaves the house and jumps the wall and yeah. runs out. Oh, man. What a guy. What a guy. Uh, yeah, I mean, what is, um, what did you favor more? Like, his, like, the younger youth part, or the latter half? Um, I think the la- la- latter half was more interesting, mm. but I do, en- I did enjoy kind of the through line of just, I think what I liked was, like, seeing the grandma in the background <laughs> <laughs> of all of this, like, just kind of her presence. Mm. Because, like, I think, really, the movie is about, like, you know. The yeah. <laughs> really. Because it's, like, Honestly. how long, like, cause oh, basically, it, it ends when the grandma dies. So, right, right. 
it, it and then in the beginning he has a narration where he's saying he talks about like his grandma and like how she really loved him and like he yeah. she favored him or whatever mm. and just kind of like seeing him and and the grandma together yeah. those were like a lot a lot of the scenes in the beginning mm. early scenes when you know he has these memories of you know walking with his grandma and like right. picking guava fruit or like going and getting shaved ice or juggling the guava yeah <laughs> yeah 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 juggling the guava fruit and so like i think that like her being in the background and her kind of being that that mm. through line that that connects everything together yeah. is kind of interesting and a cool way to, of of um, structuring the story because even when the gra- um, even when the father dies, like the grandma's there, like um, you know, with the family and just kind of like sitting there. Even when like the mother dies, <laughs> she's like sitting there and like you know, yeah. and it, it must be kind of very sad to see your children die before you. Mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, and it's weird because we don't really get her, I guess, take on the situation. Right, like she's very like a silent kind of. Or you never really know her mental status. Mm. Well, I mean, she also has a little bit of like you get the sense. I mean, clearly she deteriorates throughout the movie. Yeah, you know? and she never really has a full memory. Like she can never remember how to get back home and stuff. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, like every time we see her, she's like, "I found this lady under a tree. Yeah. Does she live here?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's like, "Yeah, she's she's ours." <laughs> My bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's kind of funny to see even. Like, even though it's a coming of age movie and things are always progressing with Aha, like the grandmother is still kind of stuck in one moment mm-hmm. in a sense, you know. Like, it's, like in that scene when she's brought back home after the guy finds her under the tree, she, her she has her bag and her bag is filled with like guava fruit, you know. And it's kind of like she's still in the time with when her grandson is mm-hmm. still kind of like a child, um, in that way. Um, and so, but like, it's kind of the same with grandmothers in general too though because you know they kind of hold on to the past in a special kind of way but like you know just kind of like they love the grandchildren or things like that um but like even though that they're getting older they still see them as like this very kind of premature as a child per se um but like it's like the grandma never really leaves that walk with Uh aha and like that moment when they're going out together into that scene um so I don't know. It was just pretty, pretty cool to see that kind of aspect in it. And even though she does have a backseat kind of role, um, it just still kind of is consistent with that. Yeah, yeah. I just really loved how like subtle a lot of these things were, mm. but it really kind of like seeps in to the movie. Yeah. Right. Like you, it's in the back of your mind as you watch it, mm. and like it really kind of makes you think about like 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 what the film is about or like how yeah. all these things come together mm-hmm. yeah. yeah there's like a lot that goes on in the back as well that you kind of have to piece together and yeah. gather um but like with the family as a whole um and then it's never like explicitly said but you kind of get if you kind of look at it deeper you kind of understand like the family itself is basically like an immigrant family right because they're, they're from mainland china and they're they're not really they haven't lived in taiwan and they're yeah. they were there on a temporary basis like the father originally wanted to be there temporarily for a couple yeah. years and then go back home um but then that just never being the case and so it's like the the parents never really adjusted to living in taiwan right or maybe we're kind of forced to yeah they, there's even an example where they're like oh like the mom bought bamboo like furniture because or the dad bought bamboo furniture because he thought that you know they were gonna leave so like they can just throw out these cheap furniture when they go back but then like they never (laughs) you know and then it took the mom so long to convince the the father to like buy her like a sewing machine and stuff stuff like that just kind of shows you like Mm -hmm. the mentality that they had and just kind of being unable to like finally come to the realization that this is their home yeah and it's like um just generationally you can see the differences like 
even the grandma is maybe worse in that kind of mind of thinking because yeah, she's she, very she always wants to go back to the mainland. exactly and in a way she kind of still is in back into the mainland like yeah. like nothing you know before they go on to that walk she's like oh we got to go back to uh, you know feng Shung to see like yeah. the the shrine the shrine and he's like why do we got to go back to the mainland and she's like we gotta pay respects to your ancestors yeah. duh yeah. And he's like uh, okay like, <laughs> let's let's pump the brakes a little bit but like yeah like she's still at home and then the parents are like struggle to come to the realization that they aren't leaving yeah. but with the kids they are sort of like that maybe more like adaptive kind of yeah like like the uh the daughter yeah like she's able to like get married to another person and mm. kind of live another life right yeah and and even like the other kid who like it's always like um like writing yeah and like yeah, studying I guess, and he's always drinking milk, <laughs> and his poop is like milk, because <laughs> that's it all he smells like milk. <laughs> yeah, but even like you know, even Aha is very, the maybe the most adapted to living in Taiwan, you know, because he was very young when he moved there, and then once he's like more into being a teenager in adolescence, he's yeah. kind of more lived into that environment, you know, and his you know you know his friends and the people that he hangs around with, and even like with that girlfriend question mark <laughs> situation. Um, but yeah, like it's kind of funny even with the sister and like the kids having to make sacrifices for the rest of the family. Cause what well, wasn't like the sister not able to, like she wasn't able to go to school or was like, there was that discussion. I don't remember exactly what at what moment. Like aha got into middle school and then I don't think the father passed away. Oh, like when he like passed that exam in, when he was young. Yeah, yeah. But the mother was like, you know, we've got so many kids, yeah. and then he's like, pretty much, we have to support the family, and we just don't have enough to really support the family. Mm. So, you know, you kind of have to be into the workforce earlier, and that may have to cause you to give up going to high school or like university yeah. essentially. Um, but and then that's why I think that's why she gets married off so fast, mm. um, due to that as well. And but it's kind of like pushed on to like oh but the the second the oldest son is able to go to school because isn't he doesn't isn't he like an educator he yeah he becomes a teacher yeah yeah so instead of like her being a teacher like he becomes a teacher or mm-hmm. something um and even like also for Aha's sake too because like yeah. he's end up going to school the entire time but he's like a bad student <laughs> 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 like you got two demerits kid yeah. The sister's, like, at the school, like, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Poking yeah. holes in his teacher's tires. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, the bike. what a twerp. Um, yeah. Um, what did you think about, like, the different deaths? Like, comparing maybe, like, the father and mother and grandma's deaths? Mm, oh, which one? Like, more? No, okay. Yeah, I mean, wait, even uh, that, like, what, what, which one did you feel was, like... Memorable for you, like watching. I'm not really sure. I mean, they all have like their context, yeah, and they're all different, and right? I think that's pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, like I think they're all like really related to Aha and like in Aha's point in t- in like life. You know, like when he's with his father's death, he's younger, um, in elementary school, and he, like, there isn't like a lot of relationship between them and the father, and they're kind of distant in a way, and then we learn after his death that he's kind of distant on purpose because he knows that he's sick. Um, but also just kind of like there's a gap in him being younger. Um, so like, and also we see like the father here and there and he's not really even doing much when we see him as well. Um, so when he dies, it's kind of fleeting in a certain sense. Um, and you kind of get like a passive feeling because he doesn't have such a big role in his life. And even you can see that in Aha as well. Um, and like you said, like when he's kind of shocked in that moment when his mother is like crying out, it's like maybe the one time that he doesn't, like he's actually feeling emotional about it because other people are like lashing out about it per se. Um, but when his when the mother passes away, like the mother has a much more bigger role than the father. And then she's, she's there, but then she's kind of gone and in and out because of the treating with, with her sickness. And so, like, when she dies, like, Aha kind of breaks down in that moment as well. But he's more, like, I don't know, like, normal about it. 
like he cries when his mother passes and then kind of like adjusts as life goes sort of thing um but i don't like i think that their the parents deaths are a way of like they're significant for the story because kind of each segment of the movie is around that transition Mm -hmm. but also like parallel to a house point in time yeah I, i thought it was interesting how like um the mother got like a christian like yeah. funeral where like they're like like they're like singing hymns and stuff but she was a christian no i know but like it was just kind of interesting like mm-hmm. you don't really see a lot of christians in like <laughs> during that time i right, feel like right. that was a pretty interesting little moment um yeah and the grandma's death i for me i i was most like i felt the worst when the grandma died right, yeah. just because like how she died where like she just kind of like was laying there for a long time yeah. and like the kids didn't no even like <laughs> notice or like mm-hmm. didn't even realize that she was dead yeah. and then like the undertakers come and like they see that she was like rotten on the one side because yeah. she was like laying down Absolutely. and it's kind of like i don't know it, it yeah it, it hits you kind of hard yeah. but also kind of like you kind of understand in a certain sense why that why Mm -hmm. but also you're kind of like dang like (laughs) come on guys like how how could you just like how could you guys just like leave her there kind of thing yeah but uh, like it gives me a sense of like maybe like just dealing with like an older like caring for somebody who's older Mm. and really like pouring out your like life into that like every day like caring for somebody like that is really not an easy thing to do you know and especially when you're teenagers when you're like a little bit in, in younger yeah. you don't really think that way you know what i mean you don't really think oh like i gotta take care of my parents or like and you know it's a very asian thing i think maybe no, no, I agree. but um yeah like in asian families there's like a very big duty to kind of like take care of your like parents mm-hmm. once they're kind of older and kind of like um, you know, make sure they're okay, you know, make sure they're, you know, doing doing okay and, like, calling them and kind of, like, you know, being with them. But, like, just seeing them in that age when they're just, like, teenagers and, and like, they literally lost every, like, parent. older, yeah, like, older figure, like, parent. Mm. And they're just kind of on their own now, right? Yeah. And then the grandma dies. And so it's just kind of, like, this sad kind of moment where, like, they don't even know what to do. They didn't even know what to do, right? Like, they're just at a loss for, like, kind of and taking they, care of the situation. They kind of adjust, like, as each parent passes away, too, though, like, independently-wise. Yeah. Like, when the father passes, um, I mean, they're still the mother. But then once, like, the mother starts to get sick, um, Aha's already pretty independent and then even becomes more independent when she's away and is, like, you know, dr- dealing with, like, the treatment and stuff. Yeah. Because it's it's just him, um, and his brothers, and the back and the grandma takes more of a backseat and more of a backseat as the story yeah. progresses, you know. So it's like once the mother pa- the mother passes away, like at their age and like as independently as they are, it kind of feels like they. I mean, they actually don't have any parents, but they're kind of are truly independent at that moment. Mm. And like you said, like once you have an an elder, um, an elder with you or grandparents, like it's kind of your responsibility to take care of them but they're not they're only at the point of taking care of themselves and definitely not at the position of taking care of somebody yeah. else you know yeah. so when the grandmother passes it's like i don't know they like you said like they don't really have they weren't able to do anything yeah. but they weren't they don't even have the experience to like or the realization of that responsibility right you know? so it's kind of sad you know what i mean like just kind of right. how sh- how like the grandma kind of dies alone even when like technically there is still family around her mm. and just she's just like laying there and like right. it's just a very just depressing kind of moment you know you're just like like dang <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's a uh, it's a weird thing it was a it made me feel some <laughs> some feelings <laughs> <laughs> like, i'm not comfortable with this yeah. but yeah like i don't know cuz like the kids never took care of her or their relationship with the grandma was again kind of like a backseat thing in a way like like her presence was there yeah. but they never were like i don't know 
how to say it, maybe like buddy buddy with her or just like yeah. they never really kept up with her well-being often and so like that fact just kept on to the very end up until she passes away so when they do check up on her it's like oh yeah and also it, it kind of feels like um maybe a kind of like a mark of like finally like the past is kind of erased like past yeah. is gone mm-hmm. finally like you know with the death of the grandmother like yeah. things of the past is gone and like now they're just kind of the future yeah is. like yeah. moving forward into their own lives kind of thing sure. where like now they're not tied to anything anymore mm-hmm. of the past not their father mother or even you know grandma like right. and they're in this new kind of place taiwan instead of mainland china and like they're just kind of living this whole new kind of life and you get that feeling too like when she passes away just i guess like the tonality of it right it doesn't necessarily like the undertakers are older right and like they give them like these like yeah side eyes and they're like dang these kids (laughs) but then the uh, the kids they're genuinely kind of look like they're just like i don't know what to do and like they're just kind of following the lead of the undertaker in a certain sense right Mm -hmm. but like they really just don't know what to do and i think that just kind of goes to show like just the generational like gap or like the movement towards Mm -hmm. just like a new kind of you know era living yeah Yeah, it's a i do i do say like once the grandma passes it puts you in a a weird place or just like a a different kind of place compared to uh the the mother and the father's deaths um it it definitely has like a i don't know like a different tug on you you can say um i felt like the mother's death felt the most like 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 uh, it felt the most like um natural like mm. like how it how a normal funeral would happen right, right, right. and then also because it, it was kind of like foreshadowed already because they already knew about the cancer and they knew like she didn't have much time yeah. whereas like the father kind of died more abruptly mm-hmm. in the eyes of like a family at least yeah. right and so like i think that also kind of show like changes um how they perceive death in that moment too or like I uh, have kind of had time to maybe understand um, what death is yeah. in 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 the context of his mother dying, yeah. and so when she actually dies, he's able to like you know have emotions and yeah. like cry and like you know. But when his father died, I was kind of not sure. Mm-hmm. But when his grandmother dies, he's just like just has you know. He's well. I think it's like another like sense is like. You know, in order to like, sometimes like older, like gra- the grandma in a certain sense could have been like, kind of like a chain for him. You know what I mean? Like, to, like pulling him back from him just being able to live his own life, maybe. maybe. And it's kind of, you know what I mean? Like, it's always in the back of his mind, maybe like just kind of like having to take care of his grandmother, but like mm-hmm. her finally dying, kind of like. You know, it's just like finally, like there's nothing that's tying him back from, from like, from, man. <laughs> yeah, or like being like family obligations, let's say, right, right. of like just you know taking care of um, somebody mm-hmm. in that sense. So it's very kind of sad in that in that moment where like, you know, there's like it's just a mix of these these different things. So yeah. I think that's why it's it's such a good like ending because like you can't really like blame him for for how he like feels but you also kind of like are like like, i never when i saw it i never got the sense of accusing anybody right like i never felt hostility in any sort of way like how could you do that to her exactly yeah yeah but then like you also still feel like how could you do that to her (laughs) right like you have like both of these things in your in your kind of like once they the undertakers came and they he was kind of explaining like the undertaker's like perception and yeah. how they felt like i i agreed with that as right, well right right like, I, I understood I and understood he understood it, yeah. stands himself because he's narrating that exactly so he kind of felt that himself right mm-hmm. so that's why it's such a good like way of portraying this moment because you you're getting both sides you're like you're you're seeing that he feels a little bit of the guilt right. 
but also you're seeing that like like what more could he have done kind of thing you know mm-hmm. like and that's such a good like way of like dealing with this moment you know yeah poor jima <laughs> <laughs> yeah seriously yeah. <laughs> yeah i don't know it's like uh, polarizing in a sense mm. but also i don't know like emotion wise it's it's polarizing yeah. in a way but also understandable um but yeah it is a it is a, a good ending kind of like you wonder what happens next in a sense yeah. like it kind of for teases a bit because like he ends up not getting into the military academy yeah and then but it doesn't say what he does though well, he took the exam, remember? Yeah. Because the girl was like, hey, right, why, don't, right. why don't we need after the exam. get together after <laughs> the exam? And he's, he's like, I'm taking the exam now. Don't do it. But he fails, though, he, right? He does fail. Yeah. yeah. So it's like. Well, he becomes a movie director after. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he turns to the life of an artist. Yes. Artiste. What'd you think of, like, her, by the way? Like, that weird. Operation. I actually enjoyed it. It was very <laughs> funny. Like, it was. <laughs> Like she already knew, you know, yeah, yeah, even yeah. before. So she was like, like you as know, soon off as the bat. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> like in the bike and he's like, yeah, showing off to her kind of thing. As know. soon as like he approaches her, she's just like, next exam <laughs> <laughs> until <laughs> after the exam. <laughs> that was like the only lines they ever exchanged. So fast, <laughs> like she knew it was coming <laughs> a mile away. I'm just waiting for it. Yeah. Did you ever get to see that feeling? Or like the sense that she reciprocated that feeling with him? At that last moment, yeah, but not like before, that, no. Yeah. But I think that's kind of like the uh, era like at say. that time. I guess that was kind of how they... It plays very much. That. <laughs> yeah. Just like prowl and yeah. look. Yeah, being a like, creeper. <laughs> yeah. But it's totally cool. That's yeah. just the way things are. Well, what do you think about that moment where like... He goes to some brothel or something. The red light district. Yeah. And then like the day after, like he's he's like just like playing pool or something and one of the guys are like Hey, I was a <laughs> not a virgin anymore. Like what? She just like keeps walking. You, but like going back to like you get his expressions in certain areas and that eludes emotion in a way. Yeah. And you get the same thing there where he's I don't know, he doesn't take any action, but he's kind of lost in a way. He's like, I don't know how to respond in that situation. I, that's why I really enjoyed the subtlety of a, of the movie. Mm-hmm. Where like it doesn't like explicitly say, oh, like I, I he likes her and like she likes him. Right. But like <laughs> through this weird way of like showing different things, you're like, uh, that's a very funny way of saying I like you. Right, <laughs> you right. know? It's so bright. Like, at the yeah. <laughs> and just like him, like, you know, like losing his virginity or whatever and yeah. like, him with his buddy so you get paid to lose your virginity yeah what was that about? <laughs> what? i was so confused what that's some bogus shit I like know. i thought you go to brothels to pay <laughs> but they give you money that's some weird. backward stuff yeah he's just like check out my red envelope guys <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like even i think what what was interesting and i wish i had, i kind of had context there's some like maybe like taiwanese or just like in that area in that era just some like the subtleties and things like specifically in a brothel scene you know they had like the water buckets like placed outside of the door and i was i wasn't sure like what that meant or what that was kind of yeah yeah, meaning but like there was a lot of moments like that as well where they kind of had things that i don't know it was like a a cultural maybe thing you know and it did like a period like right right and it doesn't explain it to you at all so you're kind of left wondering you know what What that's about yeah yeah I mean, it adds, like, depth to the movie, you know? And it really kind yeah, like, of sells the, the period. Of it, uh, it's just the study. Mm-hmm. So, which that was interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Poor sucker. <laughs> yeah, I mean, overall, like, all in all, there's a lot of just things to kind of digest. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of hard just, like, watching it the first time through to, like, catch all of it. For sure. Yeah, I mean, I had definitely had to go. I mean, like, just contextually and story-wise but even outside of that like just getting lost into like the movie in a way like oh crap like who's Aho like after he's older you know, know. like figure out like maybe yeah. some translational things um just like also like the subtleties that i mentioned but like this is a very native movie too though mm-hmm. right yeah. like it's a very personal movie obviously like it is so like it is an a semi-auto like a soft autobiographical of direct director in his life 
and you get that like personal feeling and that story kind of element because yeah. it's very naturalistic and very slice of life in that way but like as a foreigner it you it's very interesting to see but you get lost in some things as well and it's kind of like i don't know it makes it a bit of a challenge to like naturally i'm not going to understand a lot of the things that that is in the movie and the interactions just because i'm not taiwanese yeah so I don't know. It's like I going into the movie. It's, I have a very I don't know maybe voyeuristic kind of perception about it, um, and as like have trouble into taking heart in some things. Like I mean, family is understandable, and you can kind of connect into those things. But there's like those nuances that you can't really uh, connect with on a personal level as well. Yeah. Agreed. So, um, any other particular scenes or? Did you have any questions? Or did you cover those? Um, I think we covered most of it. Um, did you want sugar cane after this movie? <laughs> I wonder how it tastes. <laughs> Pretty good. Have you ever had sugar cane? No. Really? I don't, I've never just chewed on sugar cane before. It's basically just sweet. Tastes like it's sugar. Just sweet. It's just sweet. Yeah. It's, it's like... My favorite. I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of like... If... Like watermelon without the watermelon fruit flavor it's oh, just like just very sweet yeah i mean it's juicy like it's kind of like because like oh. the sugar in itself it's kind yeah. of like juicy in that way so when you bite it it's like squirt it's just like it's juicy and but it just tastes like straight sugar mm. it's pretty good there's some in florida that i had nice. but they have like sugar cane juice which is disgusting to me because it's like uber sweet like it's oh. like heart attack sweet <laughs> like they, they take all the juice and then throw it in a cup yo like you take a sip and you're like ah it's like oh. a brain freeze but with sweet your insulin is just like stop <laughs> exactly. i was like how do you how does you consume this yeah. uh yeah you just chew it and then you spit out the bark and that's it the guava was like Weird looking too, though. The coffee, yeah. Yeah, it looked like avocados. Something like that. But yeah. Um, I think it's it's cool how in the beginning, you know, like it starts out with the grandma kind of like calling out to uh, Aha, mm-hmm. and like and like you know wondering where he is or like telling him to come back, right. and it's kind of a story about you know him being a like a misfit child Mm -hmm. kind of you know roaming around you know even as a teenager he's just roaming around and kind of like i think that beginning moment of the grandma saying come back is kind of like a call to him just in his life of like coming back home or like coming back and like you know living a proper life kind of you know (laughs) Which is, yeah, I think that's a pretty cool, like, um, moment, I think, mm. just, or, like, a, uh, scene. Yeah. And it's very interesting of, like, how him, like, the setting that he grows up in is, it's, like, home to him, you know, because that's kind of all he's known, but to his parents and around him, like, you know, they're from the mainland sort of thing, and so, like, there's a weird conflicting of, to aha like this is home and like he we see him growing up there um but to everybody else it's kind of like a foreign land to them in a certain way um so that's it's very like oh interesting like immigrant lifestyle but like from the perspective of like an american of like it doesn't seem like they're kind of you know immigrants but just like in a different country but i don't know it's like a interesting kind of context is this a hard recommend for you recommending I wouldn't recommend this to many people, to be honest, just because it's a very slow film. And uh, yeah, and it's kind of a niche film, I think. Um, It's hard to recommend it to anybody. Mm -hmm. But if if there's somebody who enjoys like thinking movies (laughs) (laughs) or like movies that kind of have a, a level of depth, that's not just about like like just watching it for fun mm-hmm. or like for the spectacle of it yeah. but like when you know there, i'm sure there are people who enjoy movies to kind of like mm-hmm. um think about it and kind of um wonder about it 
And I think for those kind of people, I would recommend it too, but not for the general public. I think <laughs> if I did, they would be like, this but movie sucks, so boring, it's so slow, so boring. long. So boring. They all die at the end, <laughs> the parents. The audacity. Look what they did to their grandma. But I think if, if you know, you're kind of interested and watching a movie in a different kind of way, a little bit more studious kind of way, yeah. I think this would be a great movie. I think it's a really good movie, actually. Um, I was actually very surprised. Because me too, when I was watching it in the beginning, I was kind of bored by it. I was kind of like, uh, <laughs> how long is this going to go? Yeah, but then, you know, like when you kind of um, put on a different kind of hat, I think it, it really kind of... Um, grows on you and i and and like when i watch mo- different kinds of movies i really do have to kind of like switch my brain on yeah. it was like a different like switch because some movies are just like oh let's i can just watch it for fun but other movies it's kind of more of a of a yeah experience mm-hmm. where like i'm trying to you know like let it soak in more yeah. and if i don't have that like mindset then it just becomes a boring movie but if i have that mindset it becomes a more enjoyable movie and i think this is definitely the second <laughs> ladder <laughs> i mean movies are definitely like that you kind of have to um shape shift into them in a way you know yeah. to, to kind of enjoy it for what it is just because there's just so many different kinds mm-hmm. and um of variations but yeah i mean like i said before this movie is a very transporting movie in my opinion and yeah. i think that it caters to that kind of audience um, if you like foreign language films, for sure. And just like, it really takes you into like, Taiwan and yeah. into the 40s and 60s, you know? And it's a really solid period piece. If you just enjoy like cinematography, this film is just beautiful, man. Like just, just like every shot feels meaningful. And just the way he uses like the different like depth of field <laughs> and like how he blocks like different characters. Like this is one scene that I really liked where like, the father's kind of like chilling in his seat in the foreground. Right. And then like the mother is like like hitting um Aha Aha, chasing him in the back. And like yeah. there's like this like um like some kind of like door or like window kind of, like thing. Yeah. And then like they're like going through the area like to the foreground, spanking him. Like like it's just really well thought out and well shot. Mm-hmm. And there's so many moments like that. It's it's funny because like at Every moment in time, you kind of see the entire family in a frame, yeah. like, and every almost it feels like in every moment in time, honestly, like even when it comes to those feelings of like maybe you feel like you need a close up or like there's a very personal moment, you still get a Somebody wide, so, yeah, you <laughs> yeah, still right. get like it's still like a wide shot and like everybody like in the, the family, family is there, yeah. like there's that scene with the the sister and it was like pretty much right after um, Aha gets the check from middle school and he's like kind of you know bragging to everybody in a sense yeah and then the sister is like cleaning the floor and she's telling her story of oh i remember that time in mainland with my father and i passed the exam or whatever but i don't know she didn't feel or like the father just didn't really give her too much attention Mm -hmm. in a way but it was a very like personal and kind of hurtful story to her and like in that moment it's like this huge monologue but you see like the different people around there. Yeah, like, you know, her one of the brothers is cleaning the floor and her mother's, like, doing something. And then even her father's in and the she's scene. Like, like, just, like, cleaning while she's talking about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you get, like, that little glimpse of her alone when she goes to the bathroom. Mm. But, like, it's such a personal moment, but still you, you get that family sense, you know? Yeah. It's a... Uh, really well shot. It's good. It's good. Well, the what colors do you are nice. think, um... What do you think makes a good like family drama? I think uh, that's something. Um, and do you think this is a good family drama? This is a good family drama. I well, like watching it, I was like, this is definitely a family drama, like <laughs> through and through, <laughs> for for sure. Um, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe just a movie that sticks to its themes. I guess like a family movie that has. A theme and sticks to its thematics in that way. Um, Can you give me like an example? I mean, like for this movie, for instance, it's yeah. you know it's a family movie, but the family 
kind of takes a backseat in a way. Like, like again, like going back to kind of Aho's double life, like him slice of life outside of family, but then we get these very intimate family moments. Um, and it sticks to like that theme of like separation really well, but also just the theme of um, a coming of age and then like experiencing death and like how that affects him throughout as well. Yeah. And so like, I mean, that's, that's clearly like what pushes the movie forward through and through, you know, like every segment is about a parent dying basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, yeah, I think that cause family, like for family dramas, it's, it's very specific, but maybe you can like be broad in a way like, Oh, there's a family in the movie and then be like, throw the family category like in there. Cause there's a yeah. family in the movie. But I think, will make like a family drama is a family drama because family dramas are naturally like thematic films you know and that they talk about something specific within the family unit and i think that if a movie can bring up that and then stick to that aspect um for the entirety of the movie then that's what makes it sort of a specific uh, family drama you know yeah I, i feel like this film surprisingly enough like I think a lot of times when people watch a movie, they usually enjoy films that have a very, um, like, blatant conflict. Like, for example, like, it's it's more easier to engage with a film when there is a conflict mm. that you can kind of, like, like see right away, right? Like, let's say, like, like, a war movie. Obviously, there's a conflict there. It's more engaging for the viewer to just kind of, like, go into it and just kind of like be immersed in it quicker. Yeah, yeah. But in a film like this, I feel like the conflict isn't as like overt. Mm-hmm. It's kind of more like subtle yeah. within the story that it some it might take a while for a viewer to kind of like get invested in the story right. and kind of understand like what it really is about. Mm-hmm. But, you know, like I think this film, like you said, does a good job of kind of like as you watch it more and more, like all these things kind of like interweave and come together mm. to create this kind of underlying conflict yeah, yeah. that like is in the back of the mind, but also in the front. Like mm. like like you said, when Aha is outside in the outside world, that's like a more like direct conflict that he has with certain people. Right, right. But then like when he's at home, it's such a more backseat conflict. And, like, mixing those two together and bringing about this kind of, like, bigger, like, conflict by putting those things together, I think is the beauty of this film. Mm. Where, like, you're able to, like, like take two different kind of opposing things and kind of bringing it together in a way that is ma- that makes sense and is also, like, um, well put, yeah. well designed. I agree. I agree. Like... It's funny to see that um, family movies specifically are like, yeah, like to the average viewer viewer and like movies, it's easier to get invested into a movie if you can point out those complex because like that's what you want in a movie, right? Right. Like, you con- want to see what happens next. Exactly. Like you want to yeah. really point out yeah. what this movie is about. Like when you watch a movie, you're like, this movie is about this. Yeah. And so like that's kind of the a story. But with like definitely um, a time to live and a time to die is is not that like you have to investigate like what is it about you know because right. it's a very thoughtful film now. yeah like it doesn't it doesn't like tell you everything yeah, right yeah, exactly. It, it it expects you to f- like find it mm-hmm. through the story yeah. while you're watching it and you know that makes sometimes it, it makes it a more enjoyable film you know I agree. because it 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 allows you to kind of come up with certain like you know themes and ideas of what you think about Mm. the film and it doesn't like it expects the audience to be smarter about it It doesn't just feed you everything Mm -hmm. and and i appreciate that in a film you know it's like um maybe some people go to movies to like transport you out of real life in a way but this movie does the opposite and serves you real life um and to uh, some people that might be boring you know but to others it's like kind of shows you like there's a beauty in sort of an everyday life right. and then this movie is like hey there's there is that beauty you just kind of have to think about it and like see it you know 
Um, but like even with like just family dramas in general, it's this movie plays to it as well as like family families aren't a black and white matter, you know, like going back to conflict, you know, it's like yeah. there's this issue, you know, you got to resolve it. Like with family, there's not really sometimes like if there's a conflict in a family, um, it's not black and white, you know, that it's a lot of gray and like you don't know somebody you may feel somebody's right or like somebody might hurt somebody else or kind of in that sense, you know, like just I, know, I guess like family dysfunctional families maybe like have a lot of baggage or um, just like it can be a very complex situation when you kind of talk about family, you know, because yeah. it's a very personal um, experience and a very personal thing to each person. Um, and it's not just like bad guy versus good guy kind of yeah. idea either. But yeah, I guess for me, like what makes a good family drama is if I'm able to relate to it in a certain sense where like maybe I might not have lived the same kind of life or like I might not have the exact same family, but I'm still able to understand those kinds of like feelings mm. or like those when a certain kind of moment happens in in that family drama i'm like like oh man oh, like yeah. i can see that happening in my family or like oh i can see why that would happen or like you know and you you start to reflect on your own family maybe or like you start to see oh maybe i'm like that guy <laughs> in, in my own family you know and like kind of like you know bring about these kinds of thoughts in, in it in yourself I think that makes a good good family drama. Like it makes it it's fun when you kind of see it that yeah. way. I mean, like on a personal level too. I I really love going into Asian movies and foreign films. Like like we're talking about Asian movies and me being able to point out the comparisons yeah. despite it being an Asian film yeah. or just a foreign language film where like traditions and like culture and like the family unit and like all these different foreign aspects but there's still those like essential kind of human nature things and relationships right. that somehow don't change no matter who you yeah, are, you know? Family, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So, so being made like, oh, I can connect to that even though it's different in a context, you know? Right. And like, oh, maybe we're not all different as, you know, you can think. We think we are, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but that's, that's like the fun part for me too is re realizing like they're just people too. Like, yeah. you know, like they go through the same problems as we do, just maybe speaking a different language or just in a different place. Is there like any character that you felt like you related most to in this, in this film? <laughs> milk drinker. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> not the milk drinker. I'm definitely not that guy. Milk by itself is nasty. Um, I don't know, man. Maybe like the oldest son or probably yeah i think the most i definitely wasn't a rebellious asshole child like uh, really. i've had my moments for sure for sure but not like through and through like in um i think i'm kind of like i, I, I <laughs> <laughs> well it's definitely when i was younger that oh, that okay. kind of was kind of like me too right or like I would steal my mom's like money, like <laughs> from her purse and stuff, and like buy stuff. <laughs> and go play with my friends and like not come home. You and like my in the dirt. So, no, and but I I bought like this huge, um, Lego set, mm -hmm. and I hid it behind like the, like there was a little balcony area and like, um, mm -hmm. there was like a uh, big rice and like these big pots with like plants and like hit it behind it because I bought it, but like I couldn't even play with it because like if I play with it, they'll be like, how'd you get that? God dang. And no, just do some <laughs> sketchy place. stuff. I'll go, go out and buy stuff. And like the store owner would just let me like take it. And then later on, like um, when my mom came to the store, she, he'd be like, Oh yeah, your, your son like ate all these stuff. <laughs> you gotta pay back now. Yo, you used to tab your mom. Yes. That's so messed up, bro. I'll I'll tell my mom like I'm gonna go um to uh, kindergarten by myself today, because my brother always used to take me to kindergarten. Right, right. But then one day I was just like, sure. I'm gonna go by myself, and like I was like really adamant about it, and my mom was like, fine. And then like I went, and then the school called and they're like, oh, he's not <laughs> at school. And my mom freaked out and like, they like called the cops and like trying to find me. And then 
they realized that I was uh, at my friend's house playing the whole day. You are the worst child. Ever. I've I've had a lot of uh, experiences like <laughs> when I was younger. For those that are not watching, I'm just shaking my head religiously. But when I'm a when I was a teenager, I was a little bit different. <laughs> I was more quiet. Sure. <laughs> sure. You're not really selling that point there. Uh huh. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> enough about my uh, backstory. Traumatic backstory. Where's your coming of age movie, Lee? I'll make it soon enough. <laughs> 10 episode series Badass Adventures with Lee. No, I, I definitely did not have that kind of childhood. Um,. I kind of, I mean, I didn't move around a lot as a kid. I, I, I was born and raised here in Jersey. Up, uh, then we moved to Puerto Rico for about well, a year. You were born in Jersey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like in third grade. Okay. And then we moved to Puerto Rico, and then we were there for a short time, and then we moved to Florida. Uh-huh. Um. So like, that Puerto like year of Puerto Rico was definitely kind of traumatizing for me. Oh really? Yeah. That, what, that what grade? Fourth. Fourth grade. Fourth grade. So I don't know, like seven or eight uh-huh. at that time. Um, but yeah, that was like a, like a traumatic thing, mainly cause of like culture shock and just that aspect. Pretty much, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> What's going on? What ah! what is life? It's like, <laughs> it's like fish islands, like swimming around. Uh, yeah, but I mean, when I was in New Jersey, it wasn't that bad. I was just mm. whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think I could really connect to like one character like specifically. Maybe it's just like a little a bit mix of a different thing. Yeah, some here, some there. Yeah, yeah. I had some good memories, I think, with my grandmother when I was younger too. Mm. I do that as well. Yeah, my grandma, um, she has like a really big belly, mm. and so when I was like a little baby, I would like, like go on her on her belly and just like sleep on the belly. <laughs> Like a, yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, I have fond memories of my grandmother. I do too. We used to um, our grandmother used to live with us back when like we were living in Jersey. Mm. Um, but then before like, I don't know specifically, but like, uh, eventually she moved to Florida. Yeah. Um, and so I would go visit her like for a summer vacation thing. So and I remember like all those visits oh, with yeah. her. Yeah. She, like, taught me how to, like, swim in a pool, oh. and, like, she's lived in, like, the same apartment for so many years, so it's, like, yeah, every time I'm going back. Yeah. So, I can never, like, relate to that experience 100%. Uh, yeah. Any nitpicks? <laughs> um, can you have nitpicks? Honestly, <laughs> I mean, it, if it's a nitpick, like, just the length and just kind of it being slow, but, I mean, it's not, it, it's not a minus to this, right, to the right. film, because I, I don't think... Yeah, like it, it's it is what it is. It's just you know, life. You know, <laughs> these days kind of everything way. is so fast and so fast paced that you know yeah, yeah. it just kind of pushes you. But I think it's nice to have a film that kind of pulls you back a little. It's a very period piece. Like it's a very, like I don't know, like a very Taiwanese eighties movie. Yeah. But also does so like a very as a period piece in the forties and sixties as well. Um, yeah, no, just like a, it's a different time, a different movie. So yeah. it's like if you compare it to today, like just modern, it's not really a fair comparison. Yeah, honestly, so. I don't really have a nitpick for this. Yeah, me neither. Um, mm. There's not really anything to nitpick. Story-wise. They just do movies like almost perfect, you know? They're like, what is a continuity he's error? A great, what is a great it? Director, <laughs> man. He's, he, yeah. I haven't seen anything else from him. Mm. The Assassin was good. Assassin's pretty good. Sounds like a polarizing, like, compared to this, it's like night day. (laughs) He has a very, like, flowery, I think, Mm. aesthetic. Gotcha. I mean, I've seen, like, the covers art to his other movies, and they all feel the same as, like, this one, per se. Like, a very, I don't know, indie-ish, flowery, sort of, (laughs) slice of life kind of vibe. Um, Yeah. But I think that's pretty much covers a time to live and a time to die. Um, so next week is Tokyo Sonata. Yes, that's mine. Yeah, yeah. Well. I think it's all mine, right? Pretty Until all <laughs> yours, and then, yeah. <laughs> Mine's all older, and yours is all thing. newer. <laughs> uh, what is Tokyo Sonata? 
Tokyo Sonata. I think it's about um a father who like loses his job and like the problems that happen after that. Two thousand eight. If you have Sling, you can watch it on Sling. What's Sling? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. This I was so glad that a, a Time to Live and a Time to Die was on um, Prime. Dude, I was like, you watched yeah, I did too. I was like, where can I find this movie at? <laughs> and then like, I don't, I was on, but like on Google, it was, it said rent it. And I think I like clicked on it or something. And I was like, sign up for 30 days. Like, wait, but I have an account so I can, I can watch this. But it was on Asian Crush. Um, if anybody doesn't have Amazon. If you go to Google, you type in Tokyo Sonata, and you type in Sling, it's there. No, it's the whole thing. Yeah. Wow. It's not like a subscription. Nice. No excuses for this one. Next will be a Japanese film, so we'll see how a Japanese family dynamic. Um, I mean, yeah, it'd be fun. I think that's, that's another cool thing that we can kind of uh, maybe talk about once we kind of have more films. Just like different dynamics of different families and different cultures, you know, that'd be cool to talk about. Interesting too, though, like just period-wise, you know, like yeah. I mean, this movie is definitely old, and so there's a lot of different like um, maybe expectations or just ways of life. Yeah. Is an ordinary Japanese family slowly disintegrates after its patriarch loses his job at a prominent company. That's the synopsis, according to IMBD. I've seen the cover for this one before. Um, just never watched it. This better be a good one, Lee. You <laughs> got you got one on one. One of one of three. <laughs> Comes back like we're gonna skip this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this one's a, a bust. Even, it's not even. <laughs> it's a bust. <laughs> it's a bust. <laughs> next. <laughs> next. <laughs> See you next week. Um. Yeah, so Tokyo Sonata next week on Sling or wherever else you find it. Peace is out. Peace.